father died exactly a year ago this very day, May 5th, your name day, Arena. It was very cold then and snowing. I thought that I'd never get over it, and you fainted. We're lying there lifeless, but now, a year later, it is easy for us to think back on it, and you're already in a white dress, looking radiant. The clock was striking then, too. I remember when they were carrying father, the band was playing, and shots were fired at the cemetery. He was a general, a, a brigade commander, and yet there were very few people there, probably because it was raining, a heavy rain with snow. Why bring that up? It's warm today. You can keep the windows wide open, but the leaves on the birch trees haven't opened yet. Father was given a brigade here and left Moscow with us 11 years ago, and I remember it so well. It was early May then, too, and everything is in bloom in Moscow. It's, it's warm, and everything is bathed in sunlight. 11 years ago. But I remember it all as though we left just yesterday. Oh my god. I woke up this morning, saw all this light, saw the spring and joy stirred in my heart, and I wanted so much to go back home. Hell you will. Of course, that's all nonsense. Stop whistling, Masha. How can you do that? Because I'm at school every day, and then I real, and then I give private lessons into the evening. My head hurts all the time, and the thoughts that come to me as if I were already cold. Come to think of it, in the four years that I've been working at the school, I feel my youth and energy draining out of me every day, drop by drop, and only one hope keeps, one hope keeps getting stronger. To go to Moscow, to sell the house, drop everything here, and go to Moscow. Yes, to Moscow, as soon as possible. Our brother will probably become a professor, and he won't live here anyway. The only thing keeping us from going is poor Masha. Masha will come to Moscow for the summer every year. With God's help, everything will work out. The weather's beautiful today. I don't know why I feel so blissful. This morning, I remembered it was my name, Dade. I suddenly felt such joy, and I remembered my childhood when Mama was still alive, and such delightful thoughts stirred inside me. You're so radiant today. And you look unbelievably beautiful. Masha's beautiful, too. Andre would look good, except that he's put on too much weight, and it doesn't suit him. And I've aged and lost a lot of weight, probably because I get upset with the girls at school. Today, I'm free. I'm home, and my head doesn't hurt, and I feel younger than I did yesterday. I'm only 28. Everything's all right. If, if God's will, but I will. I think if I'd been married and stayed home all day, it would be better. I would love my husband. What you're saying is such nonsense. I'm fed up listening to you. Oh, I forgot to tell you that our new battery commander, Bershman, is going to call on you today. Well, then I'm glad to hear it. Is he old? No, not particularly. 40, 45 at the most. Seems like a good fellow. Definitely not stupid, only he talks a lot. Is he good looking? Uh. He's all right. Only he has a wife, a mother-in-law, and two girls. It's his second marriage. He calls on everyone and tells them that he has a wife and two girls. He'll tell, too. His wife's loony. She wears her hair in a long braid like a schoolgirl, speaks always in this high-flown manner, philosophizes, and attempts suicide frequently, probably to spite her husband. I would have left a woman like that long ago, but he puts up with her and only complains. With one hand... I can lift only 55 pounds, but with both, I can lift over 200 pounds. From this, I deduce that two men are not twice as strong as one, but three times as strong, and even more. To prevent hair loss, eight grams of nephilim to a half bottle of pure alcohol, dissolve and apply daily. We'll make a note of it.
So as I was saying, you put a little cork into a little bottle and you have a small glass tube running through it. Then you take a pinch of ordinary everyday alum, Ivan Romanich. Dear Ivan Romanich, what is it, my da darling little girl? Tell me, why do I feel so happy today? As if I had wind in my sails, this immense blue sky and big wind, white bird soaring above me. Why is that? Why? My white bird. When I woke up this morning, got up, washed my face, I suddenly got this feeling that everything in the world was clear to me. And I knew how to live. Dear Ivan Robinich, I know everything. People must work by the sweat of their brow no matter how they are. And that's the meaning and goal of their lives, their happiness and joy. How good it feels to be a worker who gets up at dawn and crushes stones in the street, or a shepherd, or a school teacher who teaches children, or a machinist on the railroad. Heavens, forget being human. I'd rather be an ox or an ort or even an ordinary horse as long as I could work, rather than a young woman who wakes up at noon, drinks her coffee in bed, and then spends two hours getting dressed. Oh, how awful in hot weather. You sometimes crave something to drink. That's how I crave to work. And if I won't get up early and work, then, Ivan Romanich, you must refuse me your friendship. I'll refuse. I will. Father taught us to get up at seven o'clock. Now Arena wakes at seven and stays in bed at least till nine, thinking of something. Such a serious face. <laughs> you always see me as a little girl. And you think it's strange that I have a serious face. I'm 20 years old. This longing for work, my God, I understand it so well. I've never worked in my life, not once. I was born in cold and idle St. Petersburg to a family that never knew work and never had any concern. I remember when I'd come home from military school, a lackey would pull my boots off and I'd be fussing, but my mother always looked at me with awe and was surprised when not everyone else did. They shielded me from work, only they didn't succeed. The time has come and some big massive thing is coming towards us all and a big and mighty storm's brewing. It's coming. It's getting close and it'll soon free our society from laziness, indifference, contempt for work, and this putrid boredom. I will work and in some 25 or 30 years, everybody will work. Everybody. Well, I won't work. You don't count. Thank God. You won't even be here in 25 years. In two to three years. You will die of a small stroke or I'll fly into a rage, my dear angel, and put a bullet through your head. <laughs> it's true. I've never done anything. I haven't lifted a finger since I graduated from the university. I haven't even read a single book, only newspapers. See, I know from reading the newspapers that there was some, someone, say by the name of Dobrolunov, uh, but what is, what is it, what it was he wrote, I, I don't know, God knows what. See, they're calling me downstairs. Someone's here to see me. I'll, I'll be right back. Wait. Uh, he's up to something. Yes, he left with a solemn expression and most likely will come back with a present for you. This is so unpleasant. Yes, it's awful. He's always doing silly things like that. A green oak stands by a curving seashore, and on that oak a golden chain, and on that oak a golden chain. You're not cheerful today, Masha. Where are you going? Home. That's strange. Leaving in the middle of your sister's name day party. It doesn't matter. I'll come tonight. Goodbye, my dear. I wish you once more good health and much happiness. In the old days, when Father was alive, we would have 30 or 40 officers at our parties. They were loud, but today it's one and a half officers and quiet like a hermit cell. I have to go. I'm in gloomland here today. Sad. Don't listen to me. We'll talk later. Goodbye for now, my dear. I'll go somewhere. You are so... I know how you feel, Masha. When a man talks philosophy, it's called philosophistry, or just plain sophistry. But when a woman or two get at, go at it, then it's wake me when up when it's over. What do you mean by that, you awful, terrible man? Nothing. No time to say a prayer. He was knocked down by a bear. <laughs> Stop bawling. This way, dear sir. Come in. Your feet are clean. This is from the country county council from Protopop of Mikhail Ivanich. A pie. Thank you. Please express thanks to him. What? Express thanks. Nanny dear, give him some pie. Pierpont. 
Go. I'll give you some pie. What? Come on to Sir Farapont's Faradonich. Come. I don't like this Prada Papa, Mikhail Prada Pitch, or even Ed. She, you shouldn't have invited him. I didn't invite him. So much the better. A samovar, how awful. Ivan Romanich, dear, what are you doing? <laughs> I told you. You should be ashamed of yourself. My dear, my darling girl, you've all got, you, you're all I've got. You're the most precious thing in the whole world to me. I'm almost 60. I am an old man, a lovely, worthless old man. The only good thing left in me is my love for you. And if it wasn't for you, I would have died, been dead long ago. My dear child, I've known you from the day you were born, carried you in my arms. I loved you, dear late mother. But why give such expensive presents? Expensive presents? How can you say that? Take that, take the samovar over there. Expensive presents. My dears, a colonel I don't recognize. He already took off his coat. My children, and he's coming this way. Aranushka, be sweet and polite. And it's lunchtime already. Goodness me. Must be Vershinin. Lieutenant Colonel Vershinin. I'd like to present myself. Vershinin, I'm so glad that I'm here at last. Oh, look at you. Oh, my word. Please, have a seat. We're very happy to meet you. I'm so glad. So glad. But there were three of you sisters. I remember. Three girls. I can't remember the faces now. But I remember very well that your father... Colonel Prozorov had three little girls, and I saw you with my own eyes. How time flies. How much. How time flies. Alexander Ignatovich is from Moscow. From Moscow? You are from Moscow? Yes, from Moscow. Your late father was battery commander there, and I was an officer in the same brigade. Your face, I remember a, a little, I, I think. I don't remember yours. Oh, yeah. Alia, Alia, come here, come, come. Yeah. It turns out Lieutenant Colonel Vershnin is from Moscow. Then you must be Olga Sergeyevna, the eldest. You're Maria, and you, Irina, the youngest. You are from Moscow. Yes, I studied in Moscow, entered the service, and served there a long time, and finally received my own battery assignment, and, as you can see, transferred here. I don't really remember you. I only... Remember that there were three of you, your father, I remember, vividly. I close my eyes, and I, do, I see him just like it was yesterday. I used to visit you in Moscow. I thought I remembered everyone, and all of a sudden, my name is Alexander Ignatovich. Alexander Ignatovich? You are from Moscow? What a surprise. Because we're moving there. We hope to be there already by autumn. It's our hometown. We were born there on old Best Manny Street. All of a sudden, to see someone from our hometown. Now I remember. Olia, do you remember they used to say, love struck major? You were a lieutenant and in love with someone then, and everyone teased you with major for some reason. Yes! Yes! Love struck major. Exactly right. Only then you had a mustache. Oh, how you have aged. How you have aged. Yes, when they called me Love Struck Major, I was young and in love, not anymore. But you don't have a single gray hair. You've aged, but you're not old yet. Still, I'm 42. How long ago did you leave Moscow? Eleven years, Masha. What an odd ball you are. Why are you crying? I'll start crying, too. Never mind. What street did you live on? Old Balsmeni Street. And so did we. I lived on Mith Nemetskaya Street at one time. I used to walk to the Red Barracks from here. There you cross a glum bridge on the way, and under the bridge the water's rushing. When you're all alone, it fills your heart with sadness. And here you have a wide and plentiful river, a wonderful river. Yes, only it's cold. It's cold here, and a lot of mosquitoes. Oh, no! Have you heard? Have you? Here you have a good, healthy, Slavic climate. The woods, the river, and birch trees, too. Dear, modest birch trees, I love them more than all the other trees. It's a good place to live. It's strange that the railway station is 12 miles away, though, and nobody knows why. But I know why it's like that. 
Because if the station was nearby, then it wouldn't be far away. But if it's far away, then it's not nearby. Vasily Vasilich is a real joker. Now I too remember you. I remember. I knew your dear mother. She was a good woman. May she rest in peace. Mother's buried in Moscow. At the Novodetichi. To think that I'm already starting to forget her face, the same way people won't remember us either. They'll, for, they'll forget. Yes, they'll forget. It's our fate, and there's nothing we can do about it. What we think is serious, significant, very important, the day will come. We'll, we'll all be forgotten or seem unimportant. And what's interesting is that we can't know now what will be considered sublime, important, and what pitiful and ridiculous. Then the discoveries of Copernicus or, say, Columbus seem pointless and absurd at first while gibberish written by some crank was taken as supreme truth, and it may very well turn out that our life now, to which we resign ourselves in time, will seem strange, awkward, foolish, insufficiently pure, and maybe even sinful. Who can say? Perhaps they'll think highly of it, and will remember it with respect. We don't have tortures, executions, invasions, but at the same time, so much suffering. Ah, chicka, chicka, chicka. No need to feed the bear and just give him a chance to philosophize. Vasily Vasilich, please leave me alone. It's boring after all.